for those of you that don't know, we're waiting to be cued from the truck out in the parking when we're ready to film. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Nebraska State Historical Society's Brown Bag Lecture Series. It's held here at the Museum of Nebraska History on the third Thursday of every month. Um, a detailed history of this schedule for those of you that are listening to this on television, um, as well as information about all of the Historical Society's programs and services can be found on our website at www.nebraskahistory.org. Uh, my name is Ann Billisbach, and I'm the museum director here at the Museum of Nebraska <laughs> History. Um, before I introduce today's speaker, I want to um, recognize and thank the Nebraska State Historical Society Foundation. Uh, they're the ones that provide the funding to us that allow us to broadcast these lectures on, uh, if you're living in Lincoln, you'll see them on Channel 5, but we're also getting them into the Omaha market, and so uh, uh, if you can't make it down to a lecture here in uh, uh, the auditorium, you can uh, uh, see it on TV, or if you want to listen to it again, if you missed a few things, you're welcome to do that. Um, we have reason to thank the Foundation twice for this program because they are the sponsors of the History Mystery Program um, that you'll be hearing about from our speakers in just a minute. This, is, this year's was the third um, History Mystery and I'll let uh, um, our speakers tell you a little bit more about what that means, but uh, it's an opportunity to get out and uh, test your knowledge of places in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, let me, without further ado, tell you who you will be hearing from today, and I think probably most, if not all of you, know these two gentlemen. Um, Jim McKee is a co-owner with his wife, Linda Hilgis, of Lee Booksellers and the Coinery. Uh, Jim's the author of more than 800 articles on Lincoln and Nebraska history and numismatics, um, including Lincoln, a phot photographic history, and Lincoln, the prairie capital. Um, he has a weekly column in the Sunday Lincoln Journal Star about various uh, topics in Nebraska history, which I'm sure you've all seen. And he also teaches a uh, history course on Lincoln at, uh, through Southeast Community College here in Lincoln. He's done so since 1970. Um, Ed Zimmer has been historic preservation planner for the Lincoln Planning Department for 20 years. Um, he's presen presented over a thousand, well over a thousand slideshows, talks, um, walks around neighborhoods and, and business districts and bus tours for a variety of audiences. <laughs> Um, from starting in 1985. He's a member of the Lincoln uh, School Board. Uh, you sometimes see him in the paper or on the news in that capacity, and he serves as president. He's an Omaha native, and he earned his Ph.D. in American Studies from Boston University in 1984. So without further ado, let's welcome Jim and Ed and hear about Lincoln. Welcome to the third annual, all right? Should, should, since this is kind of a quiz show, should we start with the quiz? Of which one is which? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, try, we try to do one of these once a year to establish that there are two of us. Uh, every week, Jim writes a column for the Sunday Journal Star, and I'm thanked for it. <laughs> and uh, quite frequently, Ed does walking tours of Wyuka, and I get voluminous thanks for it. So People love it. So, so. Well, now you're about to find out why this program was free. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ed has seen the slides before, as it turns out. We were going to do it cold with none of us having seen them, but half of us have seen the slides before and half of us have. You can see, figure out which one of us it is. Basically, Ed supplies the facts, and I supply the stories. We should also credit the other folks who have supplied um, part of the presentation today because the History Mystery Team, beyond the little group that, that we work with, um, is, is quite large. But the, the clues team, the core team, um, is not just Jim and myself, but also Gene Crump, Esquire. <laughs> Dick Rumbles, who tried to slip out. 
He went to ah. Bloody's meter. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah. he's standing in the back. <laughs> and Jan Lepowski, Esquire, and we you can tell the really really difficult clues were when she had a bad day in court. <laughs> and. And I think you can tell Jan had a fairly tough spring um, <laughs> by the clues we wrote this year. Remember, though, that last year several people complained that the clues weren't hard enough. Okay. So if they were a little tougher this year, it, it isn't our fault. Right? It, it didn't happen this year. <laughs> I, I was happy that I believe 25 clues. We had 25 clues. Somebody got all of them right. Nobody got all of them right. So. Was that, was that, it was somewhere there in me. between. <laughs> no, te no team got 100%, but there was no clue that baffled everyone. So we felt like they must Somebody have been solvable, yeah. or at least guessable. Even though Ed and I couldn't get some of them. No, no, we didn't. We I do couldn't. have the, the uh, representative of the winning team here today, however, and that's Ron Schroeder, uh, who represented Snoop Dogged Sleuths, which is also a rock group. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't think they, did they, they didn't get them all right, did they? No, they didn't. And they were a rock group until Dave Barry retired. Okay. <laughs> the organization of this, um, teams participate. They, they, they take a, uh, they, they pay their fee, get their clue book, come together one night. Two years we've done it around Haymark, or down, around downtown, around this building, the Historical Society Museum. This year, um, we sprang out from Haymarket, and all the clues were within the Haymarket district. And there were 25 artfully written literary clues, um, sometimes about Lincoln history. Actually, there were about eight artfully written <laughs> clues. <laughs> and, and, there were and there were 17 others. Uh, and the teams would go out all at the same moment and wander around Haymarket. It was great fun spending that hour walking Haymarket, seeing people confused looking up. Um, many things to do in Haymarket, but being confused looking up is doesn't happen all the time. And that evening, the teams went around, came back um, at the designated hour of, I think, 8 o'clock. We sat down and scored their sheets. And the final result was a team that had scored 20 out of 25 and a team that had scored 19 and a half out of 25. So we had a clear winner. Next year, we're thinking about going to Cheney. Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Huskerville or the ever popular Havelock. Havelock, Havelock. Right. <laughs> if we get we, to vote. We'd right. better begin, Jim. Indeed we have. We've used up almost our entire hour now. <laughs> Are there any questions? <laughs> well, we're gonna, we're, we have it in an order, and I, there really is no order to the way the thing is set up. You could, you could, we dropped you in the middle of, uh, right off of Barry's Bar's dock right, right there, and you could have gone almost any place. And uh, we didn't get to talk about Barry's Bar either, did we? That's kind no. of an, a, an unfortunate thing, because it is the site of a very historic hotel. And, I've always contended that maybe part of one of the basement walls actually belongs to that hotel. It, it felt like the room we were in was older than Barry's. A little, little so. musty. So uh, we started from there, and then the people found out and went all over. And our first clue was, do you want to read the clue first, or do you want to, how do you want to do it? Well, this, this was the building they might come to find. The clue was, the name belies my first true purpose. Just seek the truth, no need to curse us. For whom was this little building designed? The answer is there and not too hard to find. Somehow people got that. Yeah. It, it, it amazed me. A few still cursed us. Yes, that, that was allowed. Uh, this little building on Q Street uh, in the 700 block, uh, before its rehab uh, with the faded Lincoln Hyde and Fur Company sign on it, uh, undergoing rehab into a uh, res retail building a few years ago, and they restored the sign Many of these buildings in Haymarket now have a wonderful bronze plaque on them, giving a lot of information about them. And what we were often doing with the clues was guiding people vaguely, very vaguely, towards a building that if they then looked closely, often read the plaque, picked up additional information, they then could, could provide an answer. And somehow people um, did provide the answer here that we were looking not even for Lincoln Hyde and Fur, but rather for Carter Transfer and Storage which the plaque told you was the first user of this building. Yeah, Henry Carter came to Lincoln in 1871. I remember it well. It was a summer morning. <laughs> um, he came from Fremont, Nebraska. He'd originally come from Germany. 
uh, with one horse and one wagon to start what became Carter Transfer. And his first contract was in 1873, and he got a contract to move the mail. That's one probably the reason he was down there, and of course, there's a wholesale district as well. Uh, the, the best story about him was not about him at all, but how in 1878 he ran across a guy that was on down, going to go to work for the railroad. He hadn't started yet. So he ran across the railroad? Sir? He ran across him? He ran across him, that's with his horse and wagon. <laughs> <laughs> do we have to stand for this heckling from the crowd? Yes, we do. We'll never get done. <laughs> well, the man's name was Martin Beacons. B-E-K-I-N-S, yeah, and so he hired him. And then he left in 1888, tried his hand at farming, and Mr. Carter did. He came back and formed Carter and Beacons Company, and then later it became Lincoln Transfer Company. Then in 1890, Beacons left. He went to California, but of course his name became legend, and by the 1950s, he advertised as being the largest moving and storage company in the world. So kind of an interesting add-on to Mr. Carter. Uh, by 1925, uh, the building... Uh, was Carter and Sullivan, and it sold numerous times through the years, and ultimately Lincoln hired and Fur uh, got hold of it, and now I'm not even sure. There's a bar in the basement and a couple of smaller businesses mm -hmm. on the upper floor. Nice deli on the main floor. Our second clue read, inside were made items most heavy and strong. Outer walls are so soft, how did they last this long? Its window adornments were produced from within. Tell us the attraction, and maybe you'll win. We wanted to emphasize the word attraction, but Jack wouldn't let us use italics in the book. So, so we used bold instead. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, and we were looking for a building at the corner of 8th and Q, uh, shown here soon after it became part of uh, Carter Moving and Storage, but before that was the Seton and Lee Ironworks. It came from John Seton, who came out from Atchison, Kansas, not on the Topeka and the Santa Fe, by the way. Uh, and he bought the northwest corner of 8th and Q then in about 1880, and I think 1881 is the date I have for this mm -hmm. building, uh, three stories, 40 by 8, and he called it the machine and finishing shop. Sometimes we call it the pattern shop, don't we, or was that the building next door? And then later he built the foundry uh, right next door to the north. Uh, the building changed hands many times. In 1888, it was the Nebraska Boiler Works. Armour Cudahy, who was in several buildings in the hay market, was down there in 1890 and ended up with a man by the name of Archie Fur, who had the Archie Fur Grocers Realty Company. And in 1956, he sold it to Sullivan's. And for a long time, Sullivan's name was, well, you can see it up on the next building over, which replaced the old foundry building. He paid $90,000 for it. Since then, it's been La Paloma Restaurant, which was a Mexican restaurant that came from Havelock. Havelock. You yes, missed sir. that Havelock. clue, yeah. <laughs> If the answer is either Fisk and McGinnis, if it's a question about who the architect was, or Havelock, if it's a place name. Yeah. So you'll pass any test we give. Lin Linda says answers. I can change any conversation anywhere in the world to Havelock within seven minutes. So, <laughs> so far. I, I can do it in five. Yeah. Well, La Paloma uh, uh, was the one that brought the caboose in, which still sits there today, long back of their building, which they used for kind of a party room. Then it became the Brazen Head, which was an Irish pub. Uh, then Bachame, is that Bach how Bachame? Bach and now the same people who owned Bachame still own it, but is it Iron Works? Is that the name now? It is, A Street Iron, Iron Works. Iron Works. Um, and this view gives you a nice look. We were trying to direct people to those window ornaments that we had placed State Historical Society chimney rock ornaments on. Even magnets, yeah. Magnets, yeah. even before um, the quarter. And so that someone might walk by and notice that magnets were sticking to these window sills because they are cast iron, um, both the heads and the sills, uh, and they were presumably produced by Seton and Lee themselves, maybe in the Atchison plant before they built this building. So we were trying to direct them. Uh, I, I think we still have four buildings left that have Seton and Lee yeah. cast iron work at least visible on them. Uh, the Veith building, the St. Charles Hotel, Hargraves, Schwartz Paper, mm -hmm. Raymond Brothers. So Quite a few. Five of them, maybe, yeah. And we used those in a couple of um, clues upcoming. Uh, and we were very broad-minded on this one. We would, attract, we would accept cast iron, magnetism, or chimney rock as the answer to what was the attraction. Or have one. Or have one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the latest. Uh, <coughs> new restaurant operating in the building. Have, have you gone down and actually, that, that brick, have you ever determined how it was made? I, it's, it's very soft, and I've often uh, assumed that maybe it was, but not kiln in a regular kiln with a closed kiln, but maybe just fired uh, with open rick. It, it's not quite adobe, it's a little harder than yeah, that. And it's, and it's better than sun-dried, yeah. But don't, 
don't go down and try it. That building is in, in pretty friable condition, so look at it, but don't they, touch. They maintain it. it it's a neat, neat building. Our next clue uh, reads, oldest retailer in market where want for a shovel or nail is met. To crack the code, just this to say, what was my use in my earliest day? This building has a, a, cast, a little cast on it too, a little plaque, doesn't it? So. it? It has a name plaque. If you're very good, you can read. If you see this picture, you may not recognize it until you see it in its present incarnation. That little bit of paint that's still visible between the second and third floor windows on the south side under just the right lighting conditions says Jones Douglas and Company. The bronze plaque on it further explains that they were cracker makers. This was a cracker factory. I think from 1887 to 1905, that's what I had down. Then it became a hardware store in 1905 and literally hasn't looked back. It's been a hardware store ever since Hinkle and Joyce about 1910. So, and now it's Hinkle and, the tool house at Hinkle and Joyce. Yeah. But, so still and I, I, we didn't mention, but I think La Paloma, that building is probably uh, the oldest building, maybe? In, I, count, I count La Paloma the oldest building, or Ironworks the oldest building, yeah. and Hinkle and Joyce probably the oldest succession of same business in a location. This is this is kind of a tougher one. This is, uh, this is Del Rey, isn't it? Now, we tried to warn people at the beginning of, of the process this year that looking closely at the words or sometimes listening closely to the words might be more useful than actually having knowledge. Um, and this one reads, don't be ginger or draw a stare. This is an easy one, just to be fair. It's not hard, just get a card. Shall we dance? Here's your chance. Because this little building, a warehouse um, up on our street between 8th and 9th, um, is Delray Ballroom. And they had prepared a sheet of paper that anyone visiting would pick that up and come away with their necessary answer to um, this clue. We could have said it was just across the street from the Buffalo Commons. I hadn't thought of that. We didn't think of that. Because bison books are across the street. And uh, up until not too long ago, there was a railroad spur next to it, but not a lot left of the, of the function that it originally served. And really, really very nice interior uh, in this little building. Now th this one, um, no, it wasn't. Th I had to use my dictionary a couple times to interpret Jan's clues, um, and we did urge people to bring any resource they needed. I didn't see anybody with the World Book. Um, it might have helped. Uh, they might have been using um, internet-connected Palm Pilots or something. Um, this one reads: "A place of highest heaven adored, a domicile, but not my lord's. These walls were raised to make a space." for what endeavor to take place? Transparent. <laughs> of, of, of course, everyone got it immediately. Yeah. On the corner of 8th and Q uh, is the old HP Law uh, Wholesale Grocery Company. Attached to it, uh, to the west, is their um, tea and spice or coffee and spice annex with that big doorway where a rail spur came right into the building. In fact, the railroad tracks, are they're, they've been replicated. They're not the originals, I don't think. Right. They still go in there, so you can wheel out your kegs. Because today, this is Empyrean Ale um, that, that operates in this building. And if you use your dictionary, um, you find Empyrean means highest or greatest. Um, and Jan knew that. Yeah. Now I know it, too. A giveaway clue. And uh, that, that little building on the corner is quite neat. Uh, it now is a parking lot. Yeah. Jim does a very wonderful talk on parking lots. <laughs> uh, really nice parking lot. And a ghost sign that used to appear um, on the west wall of that building, um, barely legible, said, Home <coughs> of Milady is better coffee, or Home of Milady Coffee. That sign has been restored nicely. And so this was not Milord's, but Milady's. So it, it was all <laughs> perfectly obvious, right? What are all those groans out there for? <laughs> People actually got these. That's what amazed me. So the answer to what endeavor was roasting coffee, I think we also accepted Milady coffee. Uh, but coffee had to be in the answer. <laughs> Our 
on many of these, we were trying to lead people to a location, and then they had to find some specific thing at the, that location. Why it is that I think a very high purpose is to make people look closely, I'm not sure, but that, that's my notion of a, a high educational purpose. This one reads, it looked like a million when it was first new and still shows great beauty, its purpose anew. Out front an amigo of some local fame, the answer you seek is cast as his name. Not Amigo's Restaurant. Not Amigo's Restaurant. And of course the million uh, reference was the fact that this was Peter Kowitz, either his first million dollar building or his second, because at the same time he was building two buildings. One was the Livestock Exchange Building in Omaha and one was this one. Both of them million dollar projects and whichever one came first. If you're from Omaha, as a few folks are. Uh, I've gotten over it. <laughs> Uh, you might think of it as a million. Now, both buildings are still extant and, uh, and, and doing, looking good. So that's where the million dollars comes from. So once one finds the depot, um, yeah. then, then hopefully you find um, the sculpture out front, um, Betty Wallace's sculpture that, that as a small desk size piece originally um, was referred to as couch potato. Um, but apparently it also come from Cooler heads came about and well, when it, when it became watchful citizens. Well, when it became monumental citizen. street size, um, cast into the side of the piece um, is its name, the watchful citizen. So that, that it, it was all there and provided, one just had to find it. And it is not a likeness of Harley Burr Alexander. No. <laughs> Seventh one. This, one, this building is kind of getting some work on it right now. It is. Uh, if you go down and look in that wooden dock that was there is not there anymore. Shades of Sybil stretch across where rail cars came to call. The date of its completion is somewhere on a wall. I thought this one was just a sketch tricky, but just a, just, a, just a titch. This is one of those that, you know, where people complained about them being too easy last year, I think we mm -hmm. got back at those. Nobody complained about this one. Uh, Originally Huber Manufacturing that produced uh, farm implements, uh, we're pretty sure that's not a cannon on the dock, but part of a thresher. Um, or Quaker Rose. Later, um, Huber Manufacturing became Port Huron, also in the equipment business, and their signs um, over many years faded into one another. In fact, maybe expressed a certain shades or ghost um, of maybe even a multiple personality mm -hmm. for the building. <laughs> Um, people got it. Is that the Sybil? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that I was Sybil. That. Around to the north face of the building, uh, this is the building a couple years ago. Uh, the project now going on will rebuild the dock, provide much better accessibility, um, and put a nice roof over the dock, more or less like the mill just south of it or the, the buildings across the street. Um, it was really very wheel accessible, wheelchair unaccessible. Once you got up there, it was easy to get out. Um, and up on the north face is the date stone for, for the building and the date 1901. So the obvious answer to this, this clue, people probably got this one before they even left the building, uh, was 1901. Now you get it, Cynthia? Yeah. No, no, get she it. gets it. We could do 20, we do 50 next year, starting with these 25. And, and, and a lot of people still wouldn't get them. Yeah. Eighth clue. It's so well grounded, a pleasure to each sense. Which letters, once so graphic, are now just a past tense? Grounded. No, no. If we directed people to the mill at 8th and P, and then they searched diligently on the old Stacy Brothers Grocery Wholesale Building, and noticed the date plaque high up on the west side, which is still there. Most of it's still there, because for some reason, in fruit, the U and the T have spalled off and fallen away. We don't like to use the word fruit with I in it, and you don't like to use the use fruit with U in it, but it, so. so. Now see, that clue they got. They did. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> It, w it would have been a 25 points tie for everybody. With this. Uh, Mill, and of course now it has the largest ball bearing in Lincoln. Yes, the top of right, the, right yeah. there on the back. Would have been another clue we could have used. So the answer to this one, the required answer was U T. 
for the missing U N T. U T. That's a good Scrabble word too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ninth clue. Where once your team got leather, no longer can you get. Just good food from the boot. Have you found me yet? The answer is not New York. What is Irish pork? Another pretty shameful. Pretty this one was really pretty shameful. Yeah. A few people missed this one. All the people who guessed missed this one. <laughs> uh, but we were directing them, we hoped, towards uh, HP brand building or Harpen Brothers building, which was a saddle and tack manufacturer in its original day, a building of 1904. Later on, you know, they even made golf bags. Yeah. Clear, late, in the late in their life, they made a lot of stuff. Holsters, uh, saddles. I have a leather briefcase bags. from HP, mm. from Harpen Brothers. Mm. So that was the leather I have connection. A leather wedding dress. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks good on it. <laughs> good food from the boot was the reference, uh, this is before rehab, and today, of course, it's Vincenzo's, uh, the premier Italian restaurant, that nice boot-shaped company country on the bow. Um, we wanted to make something out of the fact that the fire escape doesn't go anywhere anymore, but... <laughs> we had already, we had other fire escape clues. Yeah, um, other fish to fry. And then... Just this is my favorite part. The now, very part. cheap sleazy pun. Oh, I was thinking of So I've always wondered, is it Harpum or Harfum? But if it's harp ham, mm -hmm. then you'd have Irish pork. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> See, too easy. I told you that yeah, was, it was too easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they it, it was kindness to me that they left that one in. It was such a terrible pun. I wonder how many people got that one. Do we have any idea, Jack, or anybody? Uh, you, you did get harp ham. Okay. It, we, we had a number who got it. The guesses of people trying to fill in an answer to that were, were not repeatable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the wedding, wedding dress connection. Sitting cute and pretty, west of the Windy City. Now just look up what metals your cup. It wouldn't have worked back when it was paper parade and I think a vacant building beside it, but the tin ceiling sits next to old Chicago. So mm -hmm. we were hoping folks might find old Chicago for the Windy City and then look up to the ceiling and give us, mm -hmm. tin was the elegant answer, tin ceiling was acceptable. Um, kind of a small building that we kind of overlook mm -hmm. once in a while too, being right next to the famous Stooges building. <laughs> Archaeologists someday will uncover that sign. It's, it's there, I think, yeah. under several layers of paint. Starship Enterprise, mm -hmm. I think, is there, too. This is one of my buildings here, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, th 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 this is a, a, a pure gym building because it is gone. It's gone, yeah. And also it is a... Yeah. See, there's a few people out there. They're paying attention. <laughs> in, in fact, Jim and I divide up all the buildings in town. I only can preserve ones that are still here. And while Jim will sometimes talk about buildings that are here, he's great with the ones that are gone and sometimes has the better stock. That's right. But this one is the best of all possible worlds because it was there, it's gone, part of it's still there, and it's a parking lot. Yeah. So it's got everything going for it. <laughs> the Buckstaff so, Saddlery Company. So yeah. our clue, we, we didn't give him the clue. That's true. Oh, we didn't. Yeah. Folks sleep now where groceries once rested, and westward our modern day transports are nested. Yet still there attached, what long fragment remains, a tribute to ardent historian's pains. On the old Buckstaff building on O Street in the, on the north side of the 700 block, they were another um, saddlery. Saddlery, yeah. In fact, one of the large, the Buckstaffs were into absolutely everything in the city of Lincoln. They, they came from Wisconsin in 1869. Uh, my favorite business was the Wisconsin Coffin Company they brought with them. Uh, the Badger Lumber Company, the Lincoln Paper Company, they manufactured paper in the city of Lincoln, probably out about where Speedway Motors used mm -hmm. to be at First and Van Doren, roughly. Uh, the Lincoln Saddlery Company and Stout and Buckstaff print, uh, Paving Company. And the saddlery lasted in the building uh, quite a while. It started in 1886, the building 1885, isn't it? I can't quite read it, 886 I guess. And at its height they said they had 50 employees in the building, three salesmen on the road, and kept a constant stock of $50,000 in harnesses and horse blankets alone. 
That's a lot of blankets. Now, if you look to the very right-hand edge of the building. Should I point? That would be swell. There's an iron pier. Now, the building doubles <laughs> over time. It must be McKee. He has a fountain pen. I, I brought a ballpoint <laughs> in case there was confusion or a call for autographs. Uh, what that is it, Hebron? Hey, <laughs> ballpoint? Ballpoint. How do you fill it, those? It's like a computer. No. <laughs> The building doubles, and so the little one we looked at in 1889 um, becomes a, a paired building, but still has that same uh, kind of. There's the old viaduct too, and you know, the, yeah. which used to start at 9th Street, and I don't know whether there, there's Eighth, some talk about or 8th. I mean, yeah. Now we're going to put in a new viaduct, but we're also talking about taking the railroad tracks out. So I'm not sure where that's going to go. There will be lots of tracks, yeah. and it will start from 9th. But where will those tracks all end up? He said, if they take the Un railroad under out, where, the viaduct. no, but where would they, if they take the depot away from downtown Lincoln, which they're kind of talking about, where would the depot and, and all those tracks end up? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't even thought of that, but there it is. Yeah. <laughs> and I kind of, I kind of was sad when this building went down because we didn't get very many parking spaces out of it, but we did convince them to leave just that little teeny piece. Huh, yeah. huh, huh. And even in the full rehab now of the Granger building into apartments, which is why people are sleeping where the groceries did, um, and their cars um, nest to the west of it, we have that remaining pier. Can you back up one? And then I was going to say that one of the things they can look for is candy back here. I'm not very good at Never backing mind. this up. Down at the bottom, I think you can still read a um, little sort of a ghost of the. Uh, it, this, this is a piece of ironwork not from Seton and Lee, but rather from Hedges, um, the, other, yeah, the other the other ironworks. Hedges is, appears all, it, for those of us who collect uh, manhole covers, or as they're now called, person hole covers, you see hedges all over. Uh, and Dieter replaced them, but hedges is all over. I have almost a complete set. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever lose your job, you could get another job. <laughs> you think so? Well, what are our jobs? <laughs> now, if we're to sing this one, Jan will have to do it. Um, no, I, I don't sing in public. But one might sing this to the um, Hi Ho, Hi Ho from Seven Dwarves. <laughs> well, I, I'll read it first, and then we'll sing it together. It's Hi Ho, Low O, it's off for clues we go. Where bros retail became wholesale, Hi Ho, Low O. Hi ho, hi ho, lo o. Oh. Initials hear your aim. Twas Yule's big roll, his realm, your goal. Give us that name. This was probably one of the trickier ones, I think. It, it was a little bit intricate. Yeah. Uh, and yet I love it. Uh, and it's one of my favorite buildings, it's still there. Uh, not been rehabbed and sort of ready, ripe for that. I have read, have you ever been upstairs in it? Mm -hmm. I have read that the offices, and I don't know whether it's still there or not, were all paneled in solid cherry wood. Is that still there? There are some office spaces on the first floor still. And I don't, yeah, I, I don't didn't, know where they were. I didn't ask them their, their species. The, uh, the Raymond brothers came to Lincoln very early on in 1871. I think they may have originally thought about starting a retail grocery store, but never got around to it. They just started a wholesale business and kept moving hither, thither, and yon until by 1882 they were doing over a million dollars a year. And at that's a time when groceries, like a loaf of bread, was a nickel. So that was a, a pretty... Uh, amazing amount of money. They had, by 1882, five salesmen. They also owned the bank in Hastings, Nebraska. And then in 1885 uh, is when this building went up. Mm -hmm. And part of that last picture never got built, did it? Uh, that no, it's the one that kind of throws us once in a while, and people want to know where it was. They also sold cigars, and they advertised the General Good Cigar, which was the best five-cent cigar in the world, they said. And I have no reason to argue with them. The old painted wall sign um, on the west side, high up, is still um, quite visible. And then down on the storefront portion, with cast iron from Seton and Lee, um, is a bronze plaque that supplies the information that the brothers, the Raymond brothers' names, were I.M. and A.S. Raymond. Isaac and Aaron. Which, of course, rearranged could spell Siam. Which... which Yule. And there were folks who just read this one and went, Yule Brenner, Siam, and never went out to the building. Yeah. 
So it maybe was too easy. I don't know. I think this would make a great building for, say, the Historical Society Foundation offices, you know? It's just crying out for rehab. It's, it's, a love, it's really one of, the, one of the best 19th century buildings in Lincoln. And of course, the, the business became H.P. Uh, Law. They bought it. H.P. Law is gone too now, but a name which a lot of you remember. Uh, one guy did try to rehabilitate that building back in, uh, in the, maybe the 1960s. I think his name was Hammond. And uh, discovered that because it was all wooden beam construction, that the fire marshal did not like it. And he was unable to carry through with it. But we can do it today. Uh, the candy factory building, I think, is pretty much wooden beam, isn't it? Lots of sprinklers. Yeah. Our next clue. 13. Uh-oh. Yeah. The side track is now off track and holds forth on O Street. But long before Joyce sang here, you could get an, you could get an all-night treat, and earlier still, rooms by the hour, or an entire evening. If you exit by my west side, by what means are you leaving? Yeah, that's, that's On the old Hotel Bennett, Bennett Hotel, as the Cafe Binet, for those of us. <laughs> on the lower right tells us. Um, where next to the old yellow cab depot, I just love this picture. That's a great one. Yeah. Put it up almost any chance I have. Um, That's about 1950, I would say. The Bennett Hotel is the portion behind the classic um, Coca-Cola sign. Um, under the Hotel Cornhusker sign with the yellow cab on it is where fireworks the other, the entrance to Fireworks Restaurant is today. I wonder how many people actually came here thinking that was the Cornhusker. I don't know. Uh, really much. little Cornhusker. It was a really a very early hotel in the city of Lincoln. Um, the, the earliest I see it as a hotel is 1880 when it was a national hotel. Before that, the property was owned by the Atchison, Nebraska Railroad, which was later absorbed by the Burlington. And an early map I have shows that the Atchison, Nebraska Depot was virtually impinging on 7th Street. In other words, it was further east than the current Burlington Depot is, and that the Burlington Depot, the first one, was out in the yards. And there was a track running literally right in front of this building. So it was natural that it became a railroad hotel uh, where the railroad put up division. Uh, people were working on the railroad at a division point. Uh, it was first known as the, uh, the Bennett Hotel by 1915 when John and Albert Bennett owned the hotel and restaurant. Which is when this building was constructed. And then by 19, and, and we have some great really, really early pictures of that building, even before yours, which is, has kind of a newsstand out in the middle of the street in front of it, a uh, real sketchy, peculiar little building. Then in 1966, and I don't remember this, but it, it, the uh, city directory told me it was Eddie Fristo's Bluebird Hotel and Cafe. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I, I can't remember it. I remember the Bluebird when it was over in the old Grand Hotel, Lou's Bluebird Cafe which for, for 15 cents you could get more food than you really wanted to eat. Uh, and then in 78 it became the sidetrack tap, which is where we got our clue. Then it became Jabrisco, and now it's fireworks. And fastened to the sidewalk on the west side is the fire escape for the upper floors. So the answer to the clue is you, if you're exiting the west, you'd be coming down the fire escape. And of course, this, this used to be one of those fire escapes that was horizontal until the a person would step on it, and then it would go down. And when we had, uh, on Saturdays, when they had the market down there, people would be underneath that. Uh, but the, again, our friends, the fire marshal, said that, you know, what if gravity should fail, right? <laughs> so they, we made, it, made us tack it to the sidewalk, so we can't have anything under there anymore. If gravity fails, rush down, this fire escape will still be functioning. Yes. <laughs> it might be hot. But. 14th one. Seek what Brits call their drugstore to find relief, and then four more. Count up to five. If one weren't there, when did the rest rise in the air? Sure. And I think this building has a uh, plaque, too, and lots of nice brick sculptures along in, in the dock. There. And the brick sculptures are, of course, relief panels. And so that was part of the clue. It was a four-story building when originally constructed. In lot four. In for $30,000, by the way. And then a fifth floor was added to it, creating the appearance we're more familiar with in 1919. That cost $14,000. So there's our, and Fisk and McGinnis designed both stages. Where were their offices? They weren't in, no, they, no, they weren't, weren't in Havelock. Havelock. No, no, they weren't. Uh, <laughs> so what we were seeking was that this four-story building became five. If you took one floor off, when did it reach the four-story height? And we were looking for the answer of 1905 which 
also would be provided by the relief panel, um, the nice Jay Cheddar sculpture um, along the, um, the dock uh, on the west side. And right above that, it would even tell you explicitly, four-story structure in 1905, uh, fifth floor added in 1919. Lincoln Drug is a, a good old firm, and it didn't go out of business in Lincoln until 1915. Uh, it started over on O Street at 11th and O, where it uh, burned to the ground, and then moved into the Lincoln Journal building. And we'll see in a minute where it moved in between this building and uh, the Lincoln Journal building, and what happened to it there, too, perhaps. 15th. To win, your team must rise like cream, not once but twice, so be alert is my advice. Now complete my little ditty, where'd I go from the Star City? Cream, of course, would right away get you down to 7th and, and P, and you'd stop and get ice cream um, at Ivana Cone um, in the Creamery building. It rose twice because the two-story building of 1900 became a four-story building in 1904. Uh, and then somewhere on it is it fixed the plaque to tell you that in 1911, Beatrice Creamery went to Chicago. And of course, this building was used as the depot while our present depot was being built. And it became Aaron Kranz's furniture company. It had a lot of, lot of people in it through the years. And it also has now a front door. It has a front door again. more or less it never had before. I think the main entrance was probably on the west side above the dock. And, and we wanted to bring in the, the freshest, newest view because the building, um, having been rehabbed on the lower floors um, over the past many years, is now being rehabbed on the top two floors as well, uh, with condominiums all sold. Oh, really? On right. the top. Spectacular. Um, I've seen some of those units. They are spectacular. Um, and office space, I think, will be provided on the third floor. But so they took down the uh, restaurant sign from the back side, didn't they? Finally, I think people are alerted that you can't get on de pastas here. Mm -hmm. And this got a little alley beside it. I didn't, let's see, what was there? No, this, this was... This is the one we, the year before, we used the cows on that? I think, I think we had yeah. it. Count the cows. Now, at, at one point, this one was also sung, Clue 16, and then they told me not to. But if you can kind of imagine this in a country twang, I'd have been out of luck if not put on a truck and had my face lifted from Block 35. Now I have for sale the state's oldest ale, which has aided the Haymarket to thrive. This clue may be easy, but don't make a big fuss. Just count the rosettes I display on my cornus. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that little building in Haymarket borrowed the elements removed from this little building on Block 35, the site of Embassy Suites, and was put back together into this facade where now Laszlo's holds forth. Uh, I don't know if you still sell the t-shirts that say Nebraska's largest and oldest brewery. That was when there was no other brewery in Nebraska. <laughs> They're still large. Still the oldest. Yeah. Still oldest and largest, oldest I think. And largest. Because don't, I think that a brewery, when it reaches a certain level, uh, in order to make the next step up, they have to get a different sort of tax stamp, and they become, you know, like huge Budweiser. They don't want to make that leap of faith. And across the salvaged cornice from the old Bill's Saloon, which had actually been a site um, involved in the early history of Miller and Payne. Uh, As were many things. Yeah. Almost everything, yeah. except for Havelock. No, I think they were in Havelock. <laughs> uh, but we were directing people here, and then they had to find the cornice and count the six rosettes. Yep. And yeah. almost everybody got this one. Well, Miller and Payne's kind of, you know, when they came to town, they sort of built a building and moved into it. And then their, their gimmick was to build another building slightly larger and put it up for sale. And if they couldn't sell it right away, they moved into it and sold a smaller one. And they just kept moving around in about a four square block area until they ended up at 13th and 0. So this is one of those buildings. I'm not even sure they ever occupied it, but they did own it. For clue 17, we wrote, fire brought me low but rising from the glow, a new building so dandy, this name found me handy. Can you rustle up my claim to sweet success and fame? Yeah, there, there's an awful lot of clues in this one. We, we I, just, I bet everybody got this one. We've we given this one away. This uh, is where the Lincoln Drug Company 
first moved uh, would have been in 1887 after their building burned down on O Street. And they built the building in segments. So. And then it burned down here. And then it burned down again. All but the corner part where now the oven is. So that part of the building is the oldest part mm -hmm. and uh, is extant. And through the years, of course, uh, the North Two Thirds burned in 1895, and then Gillen and Bonnie, a candy company in Lincoln, came in '06, and in 1942 they sold out to Russell Stober's from Denver uh, for a number of reasons. But one of the big reasons was during the war, sugar uh, was rationed, and they bought Gillen and Bonnie in order to acquire the sugar uh, ration. And then in 1980, Russell Stober's moved to Kansas City, and at that point in time, they were probably the biggest occupants, and certainly a number of buildings, in the Haymarket area. Uh, roughly seven buildings they either owned or leased or rented, some of them just to store empty candy boxes in, but they left a big hole uh, in that old warehouse district, and that's why we have the Haymarket now, really, when they moved out. And so the answer to this one was either Russell Stover Candy or simply Candy Factory. Now you can eat outdoors on the sidewalk. Be nice, mm -hmm. nice day for that. Mm -hmm. um, 18th clue. Not velvet, but once underground. Think Spears, but not her modern sound. Look high on the north wall, these two words to recall. Directing people with the appropriate memory to the old Brittany's building which had the underground restaurant beneath it. Um, earliest, called Burr and Muir Block, going about 1888. Uh, in fact, it had a date stone, um, which on the original photo you can read. Uh, and then Norton Laboratories was in it for a time, a uh, variety of businesses. Uh, and then in the very kind of beginning days of Haymarket revitalization, this was the popular Brittany's restaurant. Um, and Little visible still of that, except way up on the north wall. And I, the one thing you I forgot to bring that couldn't one. get a photo of. Nah. High up on the north wall, mostly painted over a sign that says "Grand, grand Comestibles" or "Grand Edibles." Grand, grand Edibles, yeah. which is all that's left. The rest of it's been sort of and painted. And so, out. the answer to this one, finding the building and then finding the sign, the answer was "Grand it rises Edibles." Rises above berries. The nineteenth clue. A past life of drinking and disco made prior jock owners immense dough. Not a season paired with lake, but its companion by your plate. If you've solved the dilemma of where this is at, can you tell me the product that they used to wrap? And if you can identify the building on the left side right here, you get extra points. Because it never was built? Never got built. <laughs> <laughs> For a bonus, and many teams got it, for those few teams who are score obsessed, what's the name of that first business? And in this, on the site of the old um, Lincoln Paint and Color, which burned, uh, was built a building about 1910, I think, for um, a business called Pepperberg Cigar Factory. Not cigar. Cigar. Spelled cigar. S e e g a r. Mm -hmm. And so the answer here to the initial one was cigars were what were wrapped here. And if you wanted to get the exact name of the first business, Pepperberg Cigar Factory, which is on the plaque on the building. Some people thought I was a little tightly wrapped and thought that. Uh, but, you know. No credit for answering Jim McKee on any of the questions. I think we did have to score a few teams off for answering Ed Zimmer to a question. <laughs> I can't remember what the question was. A default answer. A default answer. Yeah. Clue 20 set in, I think, a true limerick, where once was saloon occidental, now costumes are purveyed, sales or rental. Right next door is the shell of Camille's new hubby's hotel, whence came its iron so ornamental. Couldn't be, a, that's not true, because, you know, it, 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 it couldn't be a limerick because it isn't dirty. Mm. It, we had some. It, it's, a, it's a Zimrick. We had some, but they wouldn't let us. <laughs> very, very nice early location of Lincoln. Of course, right next door uh, to the right is the old uh, hotel. Uh, which you can is actually a, see up on the, the, the top right side, St. Charles uh, on the name. Which is 1884, I think, the building started. It, it had a bad fire in it, too, and became the Boyd Hotel, the Western Hotel, uh, through its existence. 
uh, and ultimately ended up as a, uh, here I think we're taken up, this is where we're taken off the top floors yeah. by Al Van Gundy, who had a sign shop in the lower part, uh, and then came down to the Geller Design Studio today. But this is also <laughs> probably the site, and it's arguable, whether this is the site of the first cabin to be built in the uh, original plat of the city of Lincoln, or whether it's at 14th and L. There's uh, two schools of thought, and I hold to this one, and uh, Joe Knight and others hold to the other one. But they both have a good claim to it. And this little storefront portion, um, the verticals are cast iron work, and the right-hand one of these two, closely examined at the base, says Seton and Lee, Lincoln, Nebraska. And of all the cast iron in Haymarket, it's the only piece that identifies itself as being manufactured in that ironwork location at 8th and Q. And we, we had folks carefully find the building next to this, which says Seton and Lee Atchison, Kansas. And I think, in fact, that was determining between the winner and the second ah, place team. Okay. Oh, so there, there was a true groan. Yeah, I had to find this one. Yeah. 21st. My westward face is witness to many passing through. The answer that you seek here is when my walls were new. You think this clue is easy, it's just a piece of cake. Better look again, because one day one date is a fake. Well, if it company. isn't a fake, we sure as heck don't know how to reverse there. <laughs> Hillis and Company building down on 7th Street. Um, handsome little piece. I had a cafe below and hotel rooms above. If you find it and read the sign, it tells you it was built in 1916. But up on the wall is a date stone that says 1869. That'd be right back there. <laughs> Um, somebody else will have to figure out, because Jim and I so far are stumped on what I think it probably is the date of birth of the builder's mother. <laughs> that, that's Adele? Mm -hmm. okay. So the right answer to this one was 1916, and we were trying to make it hard to fo for folks. And if they gave us 1869, no credit. And if you kind of look back at that building on the alleyscape, you can see some of the additions mm -hmm. as they've gone through the years. And wrapping up, 22nd. Brother, where art thou? Our fathers in heaven. This sister's project, our senses do leaven. When first on this street, we sold things of all sort. To better stock the pool, what did we import? Well, of course, it's the Woods Brothers that, that built the building. And uh, the, what did they import? Uh, they imported stallions. And they had a large, uh, well, in fact, they had two large stallion places. <laughs> I don't know. Farms, farms. Stallion mongers, is that what they were? Yeah, one of them, Stables. which was, uh, yeah, there you go, one of them which was west of, uh, of uh, William Jennings Bryan's property, and one of them which is over on the Ag Campus property. And there's a great story, and I don't know how true it is, but uh, with the importation during World War I, they offered the government of France to store some of their breeding stock during World War I, should uh, the, the country lose the war or should they lose that breeding stock. And they sent over these horses and then after the war, uh, France was sent the horses back and they said, now what do we owe you for keeping them for all that period of time? And the Woods Brothers, of course, said nothing. Yeah. Why? Because them horses was busy while they was here. <laughs> <laughs> Woods Brothers hardly ever missed a bet. Yeah. And, and then, of course, it was uh, the Atlas Carpet or somebody's carpet. Atlas I, Carpet yeah, for a time. Great, great place. And, and our sister, Ann Burkholder, of course, has her project here purveying art. Uh, and we improved the gene stock in the pool. Oh. And the plaque on the building tells about the stallions. Three to go. The way was paved and many saved. For thrift or from thirst, this place came first. For thrift or from thirst, this place came first. Find a chiseled hand, tell what you'd drop for a full house to put you on top. This one puzzled many people. Yep. Originally a side of a hotel, too, on the corner there. Hotel on the corner, the Tremont House. Tremont, yeah, Tremont. Tremont. And next to it, part of the Granger Brothers Grocery it sort of came up complex. in fits and starts around in that half block. Um, Salvation Army rebuilds the corner in 1965. Bill Schlebitz building. Mm -hmm. Wonderful Great building by Bill. And on the 1906 portion, the date 
the, not the date, but the address is carved. One could never enter here, but it had this address carved on it of 737, 733. Now, if you're watching television poker, you should yeah. be able to figure out the, the rest of this. The best answer would, of course, be to drop a three and have uh, yeah. full house of threes and seven. sevens. Seven you threes. could drop, well, you could drop a seven and, and have a lesser full house. So yeah. we, we did accept seven or three, but three was the better answer. People found it. Not everybody. Th this one was a tough one. Second to last. The finials aren't bent, aren't broken. They just appear bent. Upstream from down by is where you are sent. Between the eights, whose name stands great? Beath building at, I think, 812 P Street. Little building with the economy clothing sign on it in this view. Um, quite neglected before the revitalization of Haymarket. Great little building. And now lovingly redone. Several different businesses, now a coffee shop in the first floor. And up on that date plaque, really one of the best uh, date and name plaques in town, is the name of the nested between the eights. I think he was a grocer originally too, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah. And the very last one, oh. culminating oh. with... <laughs> not a parking Close. lot. Close. Not Fisk and you, you got it. You got it. Extra. My name is just a number. Track down the place I'd thunder. Do you know by heart where and when I got my start? Nothing. Now, uh -huh. in this early <laughs> view, it's renamed, but it was a number in this view. Uh, moved to Haymarket, it reverts to its original name, the number 710. And the plaque on the side tells us that it was made in 1901, June yeah. 1901 in Havelock, Nebraska. I think, didn't it, didn't it set out in Pioneers Park for a while? I think. Many years. I think yeah. Carol Eddins was working for the she city at that time, and she took uh, a, a lot of heat and, and managed to get that sucker. Carried it to uh, Iowa, uh, virtually to re, on to, her back. Yeah, to be re redone did. Redone and back to Haymarket in front of the line of boxcars. Which will someday, I'm told, they have shops in them. Yeah. Right, That's, that was their original plan. So you're now all ready to go out in May 2005. Well, these clues were only good in May 2005. Okay. But we hope we'll do it again in May 2006. Wherever we end up. Somewhere, some other set of clues, maybe even worse. It's hard to imagine. Uh, better, actually, better, would be the word better. you're looking for. Better, that would be it. Maybe, I don't know if there are any questions out there or not. I don't see how there could be any. I think we've absolutely, <laughs> there's one. Mr. Laszlo. Oh, actually, right next door. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, that's correct. No, that is correct. Uh, it, it's pretty close. Of course, you realize that when the city first started, the addresses were a little bit lax and things moved around. But probably, looking back to the earliest Sanborn maps, we'd probably say, in fact, the Dawson's cabin, the double-walled log cabin, was more appropriately where Geller Design is today, and not Fringe and Tassel. Have you ever said Fringe and Tassel? Not to the best of my knowledge, but if you say I have, then then maybe I have. And of course, it could have been me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, as I said, it's kind of arguable. And also, as you watch addresses in the city of Lincoln, particularly in the old part of the city, you'll find the numbers move around. And what may have been 710 may suddenly become 712 or 714. It may revert back. And if you go back to the original street numbering system, which I've never understood, it would be like number 2 O Street or 47 O Street. And there was very little. I, I've never figured it out. Have you ever figured it out exactly? I don't know what they were talking about. It's like finding something in New York City or worse. Yeah. <laughs> Another question? They wouldn't really tear down the depot, would they? They might. They might. Uh, the, none of the discussion has... Not to tear it down. I think what, what we're really looking at more likely is to move the, the freight, tr the, the rails that run through there and, and move some of that function out to Havelock. 
Um, there isn't much really with the railroad there except the Amtrak facility, and that could you know easily be moved elsewhere. Offices on the upper floors. That's true. That would have to go. But I've never seen anybody talk about tearing that building down. The building that people are scratching their heads over a little bit would be the new post office building too, but you must remember that the reason that that post office was built where it is is because at the time it was built, the rail uh, was the primary means of moving mail, and that's not true today. So they would perhaps be better served near the interstate or the airport, and so there is some, at first I thought they'll never tear that building down, but uh, yeah, it's a possibility. But not the depot, I think uh, probably a better chance of removing the po post office than the depot. But who knows? And now we're talking about instead of a little grassy park where the uh, the theaters were, uh, maybe having a hotel in there. That hotel, that's the moving feast is that hotel. It's here today and gone tomorrow. <laughs> well, wonderful Different attendance. Mr. Hammonds, by the way. Yes. <laughs> wonderful attendance today. We had great fun um, with the history mystery itself. It's even more fun writing the clues and then watching people try to solve them. So we, we do beg for the opportunity to do this again. Well, big. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.